Hey guys, I wanted to show you a quick tutorial on how to use Google Forms in case you wanted to use that for your attendance taking purposes or for test making. So you're gonna go to Google and I strongly recommend you sign in with a Google email. Um, if you don't have one, uh, you can just create one. You can also get to it just by doing a Google search for Google Forms and then opening it up. Once you're inside Google Forms, it's going to give you the option to start a blank one or to start some of these pre-made ones. Uh, you can do either one, but if you open one of these pre-made ones, it's going to have a long list of questions that you're going to probably want to have to go in through and delete. So I usually start with a blank one. And this is actually the form I'm in. It will give you this tutorial here at the top, the, your first time logging in. This is not my first time logging in, so it did give me so many questions. But then give it a good title. Uh, you saw the one I gave you was uh, Wednesday, uh, like attendance or something. And then you get to start making questions. And you see once you click on the question, you get to type in the question field. And then you can change the type of question. So I can make it multiple choice. I can make it a drop down where you know, maybe I only have a few periods, so I'm just giving them these options to click through. Okay, and um, I can make these required or I can make them not required. So once that's done, I'm going to go over here to the plus sign and I'm going to hit add a question. And now I want their last name. If I'm doing this for attendance purposes, and I'm going to make this a short answer so that they can type their name in. And this is required. And then I want their first name. And maybe I want to put something in here like, um, I can go back up here, required for attendance. That way, you know, because this is going to go out in an email to them and uh, they can technically type in anything. So I want to one limit them to only one response and then make sure they know that I really need this. I need them not to type in like duty head or something so that I can take accurate attendance. And then the other one you saw, if you open the one I sent you was just, uh, do you require additional help with this week's work? Since Wednesday is supposed to be like a checkup on them, they, they could type in, um, yeah, I would like to hop in on a Zoom with you or something. Or you saw on the one I made that an extra question, would you like an email or would you like to Zoom or something like that? So this is it. I'm done with my, um, my questions. I don't have anything else I want to add to this. So I'm going to go up here uh, and I have a couple options. I can customize my theme. If I click on that, it'll change this background. You saw in those pre-made templates, I could have like balloons or things like that. I can hit this button to preview it, which I recommend doing before you send it. And I can hit this settings button here. And the settings button, the reason I want to do this is I want to limit it to one response. I don't want to send it out to my whole class and then everybody can just keep submitting answer after answer or maybe Susie can fill it out for all her friends. Um, I want it just to be one response per person who gets it. And so Google usually does a good job of recognizing the IP address that it comes from. You also might want to change the, uh, the title of it, I guess is the right word. And I really should be adding the date to this when I do that. I think March 28th is a Wednesday. Sorry if that's not right. So I can hit the preview button and then I see what it looks like when the students get it. They can pick their period, they can type in their last name, they type in their first name, and then they can hit submit and send it to me after they type in all these fields. And the red stars is because I hit the required button. So it ha they have to fill those, form, those fields in in order to send it or in order to submit it. Okay, so I'm going to hit the send button and it's going to ask me how I want to send the form. Do I want to email it and then I'd have to type in email addresses? Do I want to in embed it into a web uh, website? If I owned a website, like, you know, the elementary school teachers are all creating their own websites through Weebly, I could do that and enter insert the code, but I don't, I just want the link. So I click on this link button and um, I can click on this and hit control C or I can even just hit copy. 
Now it does have this shortened URL thing so that it's a much shorter URL when I'm copying and pasting that into the emails, which just looks better, um, but it doesn't change anything. Okay, so now let me show you what that looks like when you send it out. Let me pause this real fast. Okay, so I've opened up an email and I've sending it to myself and I've attached the Google form just by pasting it. And in the subject line, I hit Wednesday attendance. Really, I should include the class name. And Wednesday, I should probably also add the date, 3-28. Uh, remember, the parents are getting a lot of emails from the school right now, so we want to help them with organization by putting well-defined subject lines. And then all I did was paste the link. Uh, you can add more like, hey, be sure to fill this out so that you get marked attend, uh, you know, present for Wednesday or whatever. And you see when I paste the link, this little image automatically appears. So I'm going to send it to myself and I hope that it will come through in a timely manner. There we go. So I open it up and I click on the link. It takes me over to the form and I'm going to fill it out. I'm in Mr. Skierski's first period class. My name is Chris Skierski. Do I require additional help with this week's works? No, thank you. And I'm going to submit it. Okay, now let's see if I can do this without pausing the video. I'm gonna go back over to the form. And at the top here, it shows responses. And you can see, um, oh, interesting, the drop down's giving me a pie chart, but that doesn't help me at the moment. So anyways, uh, you saw in my screenshot the other day, there was three responses because I responded three times to kind of test it. But what's gonna happen is I can export this to a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet by clicking this button right here. And it asks me to create a new spreadsheet. So I'm going to create that and I'm going to show you guys what that would look like. Okay, so they brought it into um, the Google spreadsheet form, which I'm not crazy about, but it's okay, we can get it. So here it is, what period and last name. So let's say I have a bunch of students filling this out. And bear with me for a second while I type in a bunch of names. And let's pretend these are all last names, even though I know I'm not doing all last names. Okay, that's enough. Uh, what I can do is I can, let, so these fields would all be filled. So up here at the B, I can click on this and I can say short sort sheet A to Z. That's going to put the last names or the periods in ABC order, which they already are. And then I can click over here and I can do sort sheet last uh, sort sheet A to Z. And now it puts them in ABC order. You see it pulled all the data down. So now the periods are scrambled. The last thing I did want to show you is that when I sorted column B, their period um, by A to Z, you see that column C, the last name, automatically got sorted in ABC order. Now there is a way to tell it to do this, but it's doing it automatically because it's the next one right next to the period. Um, there's also a way to select inside a period and sort it in ABC order, but in the Google spreadsheet, it's not so well done. Uh, you can export this all to your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and do it in there. But that's a lot of information that I don't want to do uh, in this video. So if you need help with that, reach out to me independently. Uh, but this is how you can very quickly, so now I can just open my RenWeb. I can even split screen this. I can make this half the screen and put RenWeb up on the other half. And I can go through and collect my attendance very quickly. So again, uh, the reason I'm sending this information to you is I think this is going to be a better solution than us all trying to get emails from all of our students and then figure out which class they're in and mark them all present and make sure we don't miss them. This is going to cut down on errors and save you a lot of time. So I hope this helps for our new Wednesday protocol during our distance learning. All right, bless you guys. Glad you're doing what you're doing. Bye.